Let's move into main topic number two, shall we? And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by Alton Wang. And Alton Wang writes, Shia LaBeouf was fired off of the movie Don't Worry Darling by director Olivia Wilde because of bad behavior and Olivia Wilde has a quote-unquote no asshole policy. She's famous for that, actually. Shia LaBeouf is a good actor but does not have the best reputation. That's putting it mildly. It is, a, is it a good ideal for a director to fire an actor only based on personality, even if they are a good actor? All right, thanks for sending that in. And yes, yeah, so what the situation here is this. Olivia Wilde, who of course did Book Smart, one of my favorite films of that year when it came out. That was her directorial debut and she totally crushed it. She's got a new movie now, her second one she's working on called Don't Worry Darling. Now, Shia LaBeouf was supposed to be in this movie. And then an announcement came out that there was a scheduling conflict. And of course, scheduling conflict is the coverall answer they use to cover everything up. But there was a scheduling conflict and that he had to depart the project. Well, now reports are coming out that that is not why Shia LaBeouf is no longer on the project. He got his ass fired by Olivia Wilde. This report comes to us from Variety, who writes the following. Variety has learned that LaBeouf was dropped from Don't Worry Darling. Uh, though suit shooting had not yet started when LaBeouf departed, insiders close to the project say that LaBeouf displayed poor behavior and his style clashed with the cast and crew, including Olivia Wilde, who ultimately fired him. He is not an easy guy to work with, a source close to the film says, adding that LaBeouf was off-putting to those associated with the project, particularly Olivia Wilde, who was known to build collaborative sets with a zero-asshole policy, the policy we just talked about a moment ago. This is unfortunate to hear. This is really unfortunate to hear for a number of reasons. Reason number one is uh, Shia LaBeouf is a great actor. I mean, you, you guys have heard me say that for a very long time. He is a great actor. And what makes this extra unfortunate is the fact that he's coming off a year that he had where he had Honey Boy and Peanut Butter Falcon, both wonderful movies in which he gives remarkable performances in each. And he had that done in one year. He even got to make an appearance at the Oscars for it, right? He got to do a, be a presenter at the Oscar, right? So, look, I know there is a lot of stuff surrounding his personal life. We're not here to go into that right now. But it's unfortunate to hear a guy that is as talented as Shia LaBeouf continuing to self-sabotage his own career because the dude is remarkably gifted. He's, in, he's absolutely incredibly gifted. Now, getting over to the question that the, the person who wrote in the email asked Rob about, is it a good idea for a director to fire an actor just because that maybe they're a jerk? You know, if they're a really good actor, is it a good idea? 1,000% it's a good idea to fire them if they're terrible on set. Because, you know, Rob, you've been on more sets than me. But I've been on a number of them. And for those of you who may not have been on sets, you know it is a high pressure, uh, high intensity, rapidly moving, codependent, absolutely relying on everybody doing their job. And it's a very cohesive, collaborative thing making films. And when you have to have a team like that and you got a cog in that machine that is mussing everything else up, that is causing more tension than needed, that is causing conflict that you don't need, when it's causing all these problems that are above and beyond just you know normal problems, when you got to deal with all this stuff anyway, you got to remove that piece of the puzzle. You got to take that piece of the puzzle and you got to remove it. It is unfortunate for Don't Worry Darling that they're losing out on a talent such as Shia LaBeouf. It is unfortunate for Shia LaBeouf that he continues to sabotage his own career, considering his unbelievable natural gifts. But yeah, if you're a director on a set and you can already see somebody's causing problems in your movie, that will affect the movie. Yep. That will affect the movie. And it absolutely is. Now, and look, Rob, it should be pointed out here. You and I were not on, uh, on set. You and I were not involved with the conversations between Olivia Wilde and Shia LaBeouf. So we don't know what actually happened. All we can go by is what Variety is reporting here. But yeah, if you're causing problems, the director should absolutely remove you. And the sooner the better. Because what you don't want to do, Rob, is get three weeks into shooting 
and then go, okay, this is God, this is not working. And now you got to re- now you got to go out and get another actor and you got to redo all those three weeks. So it was probably the right move. Rob, you've heard about this situation. What's your take on it? Well, like you just said, John, I mean, the one thing about the motion picture business or Hollywood in general is that people part of part of how you get jobs and how you build a reputation is people have to like to work with you. It's an incredibly social environment. Uh, you're with people 12 hours a day minimum. Sometimes it could be six days a week and you're working in very close quarters. And, you know, part of working in Hollywood is to be a social creature who is easy to get along with in, in addition to being great at your job. And if there is a disruptive element on the set, no matter where that comes from, if it comes from an actor, like you said, and they are, they are off putting to the other actors for any other reason or the director, it's, it's, it's not good for the morale of the entire set. It becomes a poison. Every time that actor comes on set, the the crew is like, "Uh Oh, here we go again. What's going to happen? The other actors, and it, it, if it interferes with what you're getting in camera, it has to change. You can't you can't allow money being spent every single day if there's somebody that's not working out. And it's a it's never a great position to be in, but it's a call that has to be made. You know, I, I think back to it wasn't that she was a bad actress, but Jean-Vierre Bujol was the original captain of the Starship Voyager on Star Trek Voyager. And she only shot for a couple days and they replaced her. And it was, she understood. Um, and it wasn't that she was bad or anything as a person. She, she just wasn't working out. And they made the tough call. And it happens. And in the case of this, the I like that Olivia Wilde has a no asshole policy because life is too damn short and working in movies is too damn hard. And at the end of the day, all you're left with is the final finished film. And if it's not good... Well, it's not good for anybody. So you've got to make sure that what you're doing is is the best it can be. Otherwise, you're not going to come out with a great movie. And otherwise, what's the point? Why 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 let your movie suffer? Yeah. And and of course, this now just adds us the next thing upon a lot of let's just say drama going on off camera with Shia LaBeouf lately. And you guys can go and read up on that stuff yourself. Rob, one aspect of this that I find that I'm really impressed with is, you know, a lot of directors put up with difficult actors because they need to get their movie made and they want to get this done. You would think that somebody like an Olivia Wilde, who's now only making her second movie might be intimidated by that thing. Oh, I got to have this actor in my movie. I got to tell you, I'm very impressed that for somebody only doing their second film will go, no, look, my movie, my project comes first. This is bad for my project. She didn't feel the pressure that I've got to keep this big name star who's extremely talented in, that I've got to do what's best for my movie and make this move. And the fact that she felt empowered enough, again, as only a second time director, despite how good the first movie was, that must have been a difficult call for her to make. But it's probably, her movie's probably going to benefit from that, don't you think? Uh I do, and I think it also speaks to the people that she's working with. You also need um, a powerful producing staff to go along w- with this decision. The studio, the financiers, this is not something that ever happens lightly because a Shia LaBeouf does mean something to the marketplace and it does mean something to the the producers and the studio. So this was not a move that was done willy-nilly. This was probably not something anybody really wanted to do, but it was done for the best. It was for the best for the film. And I I salute everybody beginning with her and all of her producing staff that stood behind her and the financiers and the studios that thought it was the right call. It's exactly what should happen. It shows uh, how a production is functioning properly. And I got to tell you, man, I can't wait to see this movie. Um, uh, I, I the premise of it sounds right up my alley. Uh, I don't know if it's a fantasy, like a like the prisoner sci-fi. Something weirds going on. I can't wait to see it, and um, I just want to see the best version of this movie possible. And I think that's what we're gonna get. And what uh, one of the things again, it's it's we are here to talk about this story, particularly not all the other things going on with Shia LaBeouf. But I have been a fan of Shia LaBeouf since I met I met Shia on the set of the first Transformers movie. Uh, I, I was lucky enough. I got to Paramount flew me down. I got to be on set of the first Transformers movie and I got about 20 minutes just to hang out with Shia when he was like still a kid. 
right? And he was so enthusiastic and he was so excited and he had such a positive. And I was, I've always been really impressed by the dude's acting chops. And it's really, really unfortunate to see anybody sabotage themselves. But it's extra unfortunate when you see somebody who has the degree of natural gifts that Shia has as a performer self-sabotaging his own career. So I, I'm just going to continue to hope for the best for him that he can get his crap together. Um, and uh, and hopefully better days will be ahead for him if he can you know get his crap under control. At any rate, guys, question is, what do you think about this? Were you surprised to hear about this, about Olivia Wilde firing the guy? Maybe not. Maybe you think it's well-deserved. Whatever. What do you guys think? Jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. Okay, guys.